Robert Griffin the third and the Washington Redskins look to get back on track. Record of one and four on a gorgeous day just outside our nation's capital, 61 degrees and sunny skies here at FedEx Field. Mark Tressman in his first season as Bears head coach. Bears have not played in 10 days since their Thursday night went over the Giants while Mike Shanahan's Redskins played Sunday night in Dallas. And don't underestimate that. that that's a big deal. This Chicago Bear team is rested, and when you have that late Sunday night game, you're traveling back. Uh, it, it has an impact on the health of the team, how you feel coming into the following game. Regular season series is deadlocked. Redskins have won the last four. These teams met in four championship games. Back in the late 30s, early 40s. Bears have won the toss, selected to defer. So Robbie Gold will get things started. After the ball rolled off the tee. Joshua Morgan and Niles Paul back deep for the Redskins who have had their issues on special teams. Here in Landover, Maryland, Redskins will start from their 20-yard line. Robert Griffin III, a pro bowler, following his rookie season last year. And just some of the comments coming out this week after the Dallas game. Robert Griffin III saying he wants to be more instinctive as he plays them. Get back to the way he played at Baylor University. I think he proved to everybody last week he took a big step in that progression coming off that injury from last season. Alfred Morris in the backfield. Second leading rusher in the NFL as a rookie a season ago. Griffin out of the shotgun on first down. Hands it off to Morris. And he works his way up to the 21-yard line. A gain of one. Jonathan Bostic made the tackle as we check out the Redskins offense. And you mentioned, Kenny, he was number two in rushing last year behind that monster year by Adrian Peterson. They have got to get back to running the football. Not only Alfred Morris, but Robert Griffin III looks like he's ready to take that next step. This was a team that was almost 50-50. Run pass last season. They've slid all the way to 65-35. Logan Paulson gets the start. And tight end. That's Paulson shifting. Fred Davis inactive today for the Redskins. On second and nine, RG3 is out across the 30, turns the corner, first down and more. For the 44-yard line, Griffin gains 23. Well, Darrell, if you ask, you receive, right? <laughs> you can just tell he was really excited. You, you know, you're coming back from a big injury, and all of a sudden your body tells you, you know what, you're ready for that next step in your progression back. We saw it in Dallas last week. We're seeing it at the start of this game. It opens up so much in Kyle Shanahan's playbook. 23-yard pickup for Griffin. Jordan Reed, the rookie out of Florida. Darrell, you talked about him earlier. Now in at tight end. Play clock winding down. Redskins get the snap away. Griffin does a 360. And now throws downfield to a wide open Reed. <laughs> 38 yards from Griffin to the rookie tight end. Well, one of the other big topics of conversation here in the D.C. area was miscommunication in the backfield. That, that's not proper ball handling right there. <laughs> so a little mix up there, but you know what? We may run it again next week because Jordan Reed was wide open in the Bears secondary. From the 18-yard line, ball is loose. And it is at the bottom of the pile, back at the 35-yard line. Redskins recover, but they lose 17. Oh, just negative plays in the red zone are so difficult to overcome. Well, it looked like that ball came out on the play previous to this one. Yeah, and I, they got close on the previous play because you saw Major Wright come up with the ball. The Redskins hurried up, got that ball snapped, but it went on the ground again. Alfred Morris inside arm down, fundamentals. Get the inside arm up, create that pocket for the quarterback to place it in. Cut. 
Loss of 17 yards. Redskins empty the backfield. Second down and 27. As Griffin throws over the middle, it's Reed again. Takes it down to the 20-yard line before he's tackled by Lance Briggs. Gain of 15, Reed's second catch. Yeah, working against his former college teammate, John Bostick, at the middle linebacker position. I, you know, we talked to Charles Tillman. We talked to Lance Briggs. They've seen Jordan Reed on film. They compared him to Jermichael Finley at Green Bay. That, that is high praise for a young guy starting out his career. Reed, a third-round pick out of Florida. Now third down and 12. The slam could not be handled by Garcon. Remember, he and Robert Griffin III had some miscommunication problems in the game against Dallas on Sunday night. Uh, no miscommunication here. A quick slant coming inside. Ball gets on him quick, but Pierre Garcon's got to make that catch. Nothing to it. There's going to be a catch run. You're going to have an opportunity to get the first down. Redskins with a new long snapper this week. It's Kyle Nelson following the season-ending injury suffered by Nick Sundberg on Sunday night. This will be a 38-yard attempt for Beth. Just three for five this season. After a terrific rookie year, only missed one field goal attempt last season. And his kick is good. With the new long snapper, perfect execution. Rocket places it down. Three nothing Redskins. This game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Redskins lead 3-0. They had issues in the red zone last week. We got them into the red zone, but held to a field goal. Yeah, negative plays in the red zone last week against Dallas in third downs. They were an awful down and distance situation, almost 10 yards. And that was the same situation there. That was third and 10 plus once you got the ball to the 18. So they, they cannot afford to have negative plays. Got to have focus when you enter the red zone. Short kickoff by Forbath as they keep it away from Devin Hester. This is Eric Weems, a former Pro Bowl return man with the Atlanta Falcons. Here comes Jake Cutler getting set to make his 100th NFL start. This game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. There's an offense for the first time, trailing the Redskins 3-0. Jay Cutler, fifth season in Chicago, originally drafted by Mike Shanahan in Denver. Career record of 55 and 44, his 100th NFL start. First and 10 for the Bears from their own 26-yard line. Cutler looking to throw on first down, the pass is short, intended for Alshon Jeffrey. Jay Cutler has been rocked up throughout his career, so the, the point of emphasis with Mark Tressman, let's go fix that offensive line. Two free agent pickups and Jermont Bushrod, Matt Slauson on the left, and then two draft picks on the right side. Roberto Garza, the only holdover from last year's starting offensive line. That has had a huge impact on Jay Cutler. Yeah, the ball is going to come out a little bit quicker, but the confidence that he has in his protection up front is paying huge dividends. Evan Britton in as an extra blocker. On second and ten. Forte followed up by Barry Cofield and company. Redskins defense ranked 27th in the NFL. Yeah, but that was after a real tough start to the season. And I watched them play last week against Dallas. They, they played a heck of a game. This is a defense that is improving week after week, and if the Chicago Bears are thinking they're walking into the 27th ranked defense in the NFL, they're going to be in for a surprise. They played well last week against Dallas. Redskins had a tough time defensively first couple of weeks against the Eagles and the Packers. Cutler on third and nine, under pressure, gets rid of the football. And Brandon Marshall out of the 35-yard line, yard shy of the marker. And you look at right here, there's your big overload out that way with some wide splits. Martellus Bennett, your tight end standing up right there. And then look at the Redskins. They crowd everybody into the center, make the adjustment. You're going to have a blitzer free to Jay Cutler. D'Angelo Hall, almost an interception. 
He had four last time he faced Cutler and the Bears. All in the second half. And he's been on D'Angelo Hall, on Brandon Marshall every time so far. Bears go three and out. University of Maryland product Adam Podlesh will punt it away to Joshua Morgan. Back deep for the Redskins. Terrific kick. Morgan lets it bounce. And it will come to a halt at the one-yard line. And it is down by Zachary Bowman. Came close to touching the goal line. 65 yards on the punt and a roll. Good job staying out. Game is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By KFC, the official sponsor of couch gating. KFC plus football equals couch gating. And by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Visa turning football fantasies into reality. I want you guys to listen to me. We've worked hard this whole season. All the adversity that we've been through the first couple weeks, it's only going to make our breakthrough feel that much better. Today we get our breakthrough. You got to see it. You got to believe it. And then we're going to go out there and take it. When we step on this field, we come out here and do what players do. Make plays. All right? Let's go. Make plays on three. One, two, three. Make plays. Yeah, one of the things that, that Robert Griffin III told us, making plays, and then sometimes when it's not drawn up perfectly, we've still got to find a way to make those plays. And he made some plays during the Redskins' first possession, ran for 23, and completed two passes to Jordan Reed for 53 yards. Redskins start from the one-yard line, and that pass is batted down. So it will be second and ten from the one. And Lance Briggs read that right from the stretch. On the line of scrimmage, he think like he was bringing a blitz, and he stepped right back. One thing that Robert Griffin is, is doing right now, he's looking where he's throwing, so he gives an easy read for those linebackers to get in those passing lanes. On second and ten, it's Terrell Young, the fullback, and he is bottled up. The question is, did the entire ball come out? Now they are marking him outside the end zone just barely. Trying to slip it into the fullback quick. Julius Peppers, we talk him about as a pass rusher, but I tell you what, he is a very, very good run defender as well. You can see Darrell Young gets that ball beyond that end line. That entire ball has to come out. He got it out. Redskins now facing third and ten. Play clock at one, and Griffin forced to use a timeout. Although, if you take the penalty, there's no room to move the ball back. So, may have been a better decision not to call timeout. Yeah, timeouts are so critical, and that's you know that'll be part of the process of, of him maturing as a quarterback and understanding situational football. Half the distance would have been about an inch. <laughs> Less than that, maybe. We'll go back and take a look at that run. Now, coming out of the end zone, the entire ball has to come across the end line. The body can still be in. As long as the entire ball comes outside that end line, then it's not a safety. Some of the Bears defenders were signaling safety, but there you see the ball came all the way out. As Peppers wrapped up Darrell Young. So the Redskins use their first time out. Now third and ten. Roy Hillary Jr. in the backfield, and the play is blown dead. It's a false start. Cleet Blakeman, our referee. False start. Offense, number 85. At least half the distance to the goal line. Replay third down. Well, there goes your inch right there, Kenny. There it is, half the distance. Leonard Hankerson, the guilty Redskin. But I like the call, though. Go hard count down at this part of the field because it is. I mean, it's, it's five yards for the offense if you get the neutral zone infraction, but you get nothing penalized if you have the false start. Griffin on third and ten. Passes incomplete again. 
intended for Garcon. And here comes the difficult part. Because of where they are in the field, it's usually about 15 yards to do your punt, and they're only going to have a little over 10. With a new long snapper as well. Griffin wanted a flag. So there is Savraka setting up just in front of Goose. He's closer to Goose than to the long snapper, Kyle Wilson. I felt the air after he kicked the ball, Kenny. And here's Devin Hester. Hester takes it to the Redskins, 30. There is a flag back at the nine-yard line. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 19. Currently is 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down, Chicago. That's on Joe Anderson, first Bears penalty, but they will still have terrific field position. Well, this November, some cops are born, others are made. Get ready for the next evolution of cop drama. Don't miss the show critics are calling obsession-worthy and one of the best news series this fall. Almost Human premieres Monday, November 4th right here on Fox. So the Bears following the penalty. There's Anderson, who was flagged. Back up wide out. Bears will start from the Redskins, 47. Forte in the backfield. Martellus Bennett shifts to the left side of the line. Butler with time on first down. Marshall bottled it and then made the catch. For a Bears first down at the Redskins, 34, a 13-yard pass play. And if, if you have D'Angelo Hall on you in coverage, you're usually not going to get an opportunity to have an extra catch on this. Good concentration, but Brandon Marshall's going to need to catch those clean. He's going to have tight coverage all day from D'Angelo Hall when he's outside. Marshall split wide to the right, matched up with Hall. Bennett again shifting. Butler out of the shotgun. Low snap. Butler looking for Bennett, the tight end. London Fletcher on the coverage. No flags. Time for our first game break of the afternoon. We head to Los Angeles and Joel Klein. All right, thank you, Kenny. We take you to Detroit, where Andy Dalton out of the pocket, and he goes deep down the field. A.J. Green wide open. 82 yards later, he's in the end zone. Longest TD of his career. 7-0 Bengals. Back to you, Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Joe. A couple of four and two teams going at it in Detroit. Bengals lead the AFC North. On second and ten. On the end of the round, this is Jeffrey. And Alshon Jeffrey takes it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line for a gain of five, setting up third down at five. And we've been talking a lot about Brandon Marshall, but all Sean Jeffrey is really starting to come into his own. And when you can complement a receiver like Brandon Marshall, who's going to challenge a D'Angelo Hall, you're going to try and put your best guy there. There's going to be opportunities for him. You can see the start that he's off to this year. Huge game against New Orleans two weeks ago, set a franchise record, 218 yards. Third down and five. Bears already in field goal range as Cutler throws, and it is D'Angelo Hall on the coverage. Well, he's been close on a couple already this afternoon. Just great instincts, preparation. Look at the jump on the ball. You've got two receivers in the same spot on the field, so there could have been a mistake there, maybe a misread by a hot adjustment. Usually you're not going to have Earl Bennett and Brandon Marshall that close together. And D'Angelo Hall takes advantage of that situation. So here is Robbie Gold, who has hit 12 in a row, now to attempt a 47-yard field goal. He has been perfect this season from the left hash. Ponglitz places it down, and Gold's kick is straight through. So the Bears take advantage of some terrific field position. Tie the game at three. Bears and Redskins tied at three. Here in 2013, these teams have a long history. We take you back to 1937. 
Redskins move to D.C., draft Sammy Paul with the sixth overall pick. And they would go on to defeat the Bears at Wrigley Field in the NFL championship game, 28-21, three touchdown passes for Ball. Redskins and Bears met four times for the title from 37 to 43, including 1940 championship game, Darrell, won by the Bears over the Redskins, 73-0, still the largest margin of victory in NFL history. Ooh, tough day at the office there. And during the season, Redskins had defeated the Bears 7-3. Go 7-3, 73-0 the other way. 3-3 three, three today as RG3 and the Redskins offense head back onto the field. Two completions to Jordan Reed. Rookie tight end on the Redskins. First possession at a 23-yard run. Redskins start from the 20-yard line. Morris in the backfield along with the fullback, Young. On first down off the fake to Morris. Griffin fires and it's picked off by Charles Tillman. And Tillman is inside the 10, tackled by Young. Tillman and RG3 grew up in the same hometown. Coppers Cove, Texas. When Griffin was in seventh grade, he met Tillman for the first time, and now he's picked off by Charles Tillman. Yeah, and he told uh, Robert Griffin III to top tell, stop telling that story because it makes him feel old. He doesn't look old on this play right here. The one thing that hasn't changed with the Chicago Bears is their defense. They continue to generate takeaways. And Charles Tillman was just sitting right there as a safety over the top. Yeah, bad decision by Robert Griffin III on that. Should have threw that ball away. So Tillman, who missed Thursday's game against the Giants with a knee injury, returns today. It's his third interception of the season, 36th of his career. First and goal for the Bears from the Redskins' 10. Cutler on first down, fires, and the catch is made by Marshall. And he's tackled by about six Redskins. Down at the two-yard line, a gain of eight. Six. There was about ten guys. They were jumping on the pile. I'll tell you what, one thing that this Redskins defense does is they run the ball. Brandon Marshall comes with a nice little catch inside the five. I'll tell you what, there were eight guys there real fast. Bears again send in number 62, Evan Britton, as an extra blocker. Second and goal from the two following... The Redskins turnover. Three wide receivers, Marshall in the slot. A handoff from Matt Fortini, pulls his way into the end zone for a Bears touchdown. Set up by the Tillman pick. Uh, this is well blocked up front by the Chicago Bears. Redskin defenders on the ground. He's just coming straight through here. Doesn't have to change course, just a little hop into the end zone. Kyle Long out on the pull to get the big block on London Fletcher as he scrapes to try and fill that running lane. Fourth touchdown of the season for Matt Forte. Bobby Gold, line drive kick for the extra point. Chicago Bears scored 10 points in 61 seconds. Matt Forte was giving the Bears the lead. Two-yard touchdown run following the Tillman interception of RG3. Yeah, you, you love those kind of drives. Ten yards for touchdowns. That's what you get with the Chicago defense. Charles Tillman, Tim Jennings, and they're so good at taking the ball away. Coming into play today, Bears second in the league in takeaways. Only the Chiefs have four. It takes a knee. Redskins start at the 20. And the World Series will start Wednesday night. St. Louis Cardinals, Boston Red Sox. Game one of the Fall Classic. Live from Fenway Park. Wednesday, 7 Eastern. 
with a Fox Sports Live World Series special on Fox Sports 1. And then the first pitch at 7.30 with Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. Red Sox in the World Series for the third time in the last decade. And there's Charles Tilden, whose interception of Robert Griffin III led to the first touchdown of this game. From the 20 on first down, it's Alfred Morris. Morris games three. Redskins, Darrell, once again behind early. Yeah, off to some slow starts, but let's just take our game for an example and, and see how they've gotten off to a slow start again this afternoon. That opening drive right down the field, first to 10 at the 18, turns into third and 11 at the 19, have to settle for the field goal. Great special teams play by the Bears, pins them back, and then the interception. So, you know, Robert Griffin III talked about making plays at the beginning of the game, trying to get his team going. And they haven't, uh, they haven't been able to make the critical ones up until this point. They've trailed at halftime in all five of their games. Here's Griffin on second and six. Steps across the 30 and picks up a Redskins first down. And I say you stay with this right now. Continue to hand the ball to Alfred Morris. Get into some of your read, keep, and read option plays with Robert Griffin III. Then come back to the play action. There's so many elements in this running game. It's going to be very, very difficult for the Chicago Bears to defend all of that simulation in the play action game. Especially with John Bostic, a rookie, as your middle linebacker for the Bears. Bostic in for the entry, D.J. Williams. Griffin game seven, and a Redskins first down. Now the toss to Morris, running right, and he is tackled by Briggs. Yeah, that defensive line for Chicago's Bears are just establishing a new line of scrimmage a yard or two in the backfield of the Washington Redskins. Now that's just great effort by wow. Lance Briggs because Logan Paulson's got a good job of securing him on the edge, and he just continues to fight through that block to make the tackle. Briggs now in his 11th season. He's a seven-time pro bowler. And he makes the tackle of Morris for a loss of two. Jordan Reed shifts into the backfield. Second down and 12. Off the fake to Morris. Griffin steps to his right and then throws. And another nice tackle by Briggs as Reed makes the catch and gains five. That was funny, his comment, uh, you know, his, his first season without Brian Urlacher, and, you know, he has to assume all the responsibilities of getting everybody lined up, and, you know, very complimentary of, of Brian, of, you know, that's a lot, that's a lot pre-snap to make sure everybody has got the call and lined up, and then you got to get into your own spot and make sure that your rules and your responsibilities are right. They told us those were not my duties in past years, <laughs> getting the guys aligned and making the adjustments. Played next to Urlacher for the last 10 seasons. the 45 it is Jordan Reed again and he remains down and this could be big I mean he's been your your big player in the passing game watch Anderson here as he backs out kind of fakes a little bit gets in there gets some pressure into the face of Robert Griffin the third but they get it out to Jordan Reed we'll see what happens at the end here Inside-out tackle by the Chicago Bears. All four of Griffin's completions so far have gone to Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed with four receptions in this first quarter, walked off under his own power. Yeah, Lance Briggs coming from the inside. Watch the hit right into the midsection. And hopefully just the wind knocked out. That was a legal hit by Lance Briggs. Redskins sent in Paulson and Paul the tight end position. Play action. Griffin with room to run. He crosses midfield and steps out of bounds at the Bears 47. James Anderson, another good play. We saw him on the blitz earlier in this series. This time it's that bootleg pass, and you know what the elements are. You know there's going to be a shallow guy, a guy at the intermediate level, and then a guy down the field. He does a great job. He recognizes the play and immediately locks on to the tight end who would have gone to the flat and gave Robert Griffin the third nowhere to throw. Griffin games eight. He's hit a couple of times as he crossed the sideline on Sunday night in Dallas. A lot of talk about that late hits this week. Now the handoff, it's Morris, and he picks up a first down before he's tackled by Julius Peppers. 
down to the Bears' 43-yard line. Again, you're always worried about Julius Peppers in the pass game, but he's not one-dimensional. He's not just a pass rusher. He recognizes run. He gets down the line of scrimmage as well as anybody. You've got to be able to account for him somehow because he will shut down every run away from him because of his pursuit. And the nice thing he does, he keeps his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage too this week. Come back out if Griffin or has, has the ball on the backside like on a naked or something like that. He does a nice job of closing the gaps on the backside. Peppers, no tackles against the Giants, but he's been very active so far today. From the 43-yard line on first down, it's Morris. And Morris finds a big hole and picks up another Redskins first down. Anderson finally makes the tackle, and there is a flag on the field as well. And that's one of the ways to combat against a guy who's great in backside pursuit is to run directly at Julius Peppers. Holding offense for 15. Bunnies 10 yards from the spot of foul. Replay first down. Joshua Morgan. Yeah, wide receiver. He's at the top of your screen working against Charles Tillman. You get the arms outside the frame of the body, and they're going to call that, and then he goes to the ground. They're definitely going to call it. James Anderson again hustling from the backside to make a tackle. He's off to a good start this afternoon. They covered a lot of ground out there. So the 15-yard run by Morris, the hold on Morgan, so the ball plays back at the 46-yard line. Jordan Reed still on the sidelines for the Redskins. Shake it up earlier on this drive. First down at 13, the toss to Morris. Tries to get it back inside, he got past Briggs. And then he's tackled by Landon Cohen, a gain of four. For Alfred Morris, so it will be second down and nine. I think one of the things you'll notice as you watch Alfred Morris run, it looks like there's nothing there, and he finds a way to make three yards, four yards, it doesn't have to be blocked up perfectly for him. And it was one of the things that Mike Shanahan saw from him in college. Not a lot of running lanes, but plays that should have been minus one, minus two at Florida Atlantic all of a sudden turn into three-yard gains, four-yard gains down the field. Play for Howard Stellenberger in college. Sixth-round draft pick by the Redskins last year. Second down and nine. Off the fake to Mars. It's Griffin. He has a first down and more. He takes a hard hit. You said they were from the same town. Tillman reminding Robert Griffin III, we are not in Copper's <laughs> Cove, Texas this afternoon. No friends on game day. No, no, you step in between the white lines. That's it's on. Right. Whole different world here. That's a great ball fake right there. I was following Alfred Morris that through the middle too. of the line. You said earlier, Darrell, Tillman not happy that <laughs> RG3 has told everybody, including us, the story about bidding Charles Tillman when Robert was back in seventh grade. 15-yard run, big hit, first quarter comes to an end. Jordan Reed back on the field for the Redskins, went in, had his hip checked out. Reed has four receptions, all four of Robert Griffin III's completions in the first quarter went to Reed, and Griffin with 51 yards on the ground on four carries. We start the second quarter, 10th play of the drive for the Redskins and getting into the backfield to wrap up Alfred Morris is Corey Wooten. That's what we talked about, the penetration. If you watch Corey Wooten right here, he's in the middle of your screen there in a three technique. Watch how he just penetrates right into the backfield. Goes, lowers his shoulder, he stays nice and low, and there's nowhere for Morris to go at all. That's something that really can slow down this run game. Remember, Wooten got into the backfield in 2010. His sack of Brett Favre wound up being the last play of Favre's NFL career. Second down at 14. As Griffin fires, and it's Garcon who picks up Orenskin's first down at the Bears. 13-yard line, a 20-yard pass play. That was a tight window for Robert Griffin III as well. Coming out of the slot in tight, your linebackers are going to be dropping. So you see, you play it off a little bit. Here comes your safety coming down, dropping in corner, coming from the outside. Redskins in the red zone. No red zone touchdowns in Dallas on Sunday. But it is Roy Hallou who gets into the end zone for a Redskins touchdown. Here 
today against Chicago. That was a gaping hole. And this is the area that they've got to get back to to have success in the, in the red zone. They were one of the best rushing teams in the red zone last season. This is just a straight line. He's not going to have to change course very much at all. Great job by his guys up front getting to the second level. Puts that foot in the ground north-south. Nobody there until he gets to the goal line. Second touchdown this season for Roy Hallou Jr. Guy Forbath, the extra point. Redskins drive 80 yards in 13 plays. Tie the game at 10. This game on Fox is sponsored by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. By Corona, who invites you to find your beach this football season. And by Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Tied at 10, and we've discussed the Redskins' slow starts. Touchdown scored by Roy Hallou Jr. Only the second TD scored by the Redskins offense in the first half this season. Their defense has three. That was a great drive. A little mix of everything. They ran the ball well. Some play action throws. After no return touchdowns his last 28 games. And the Redskins kept it out of his hands on the last kickoff. The short kick. Eric Weeds, and now Hester takes it out from about eight yards deep. Hester out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So Jay Cutler leads the Bears' offense back onto the field. Mark Tressman in his first season as an NFL head coach. We mentioned Howard Schnellenberger earlier. He was Tressman's first boss at the University of Miami. Tressman would go on to spend 17 seasons in the NFL, the last five as a head coach up in Canada with the Montreal Alouettes. Yeah, an opportunity to be around some great coaches. Jimmy Johnson as well down at the University of Miami. Bud Grant, Marty Schottenheimer, Ray Perkins, Sean Payton, John Gruden. Uh, just an unbelievable opportunity to, to be around those guys and, and build your football mind from some of the best that have ever been around this game. Very impressive list. Butler on first down to the outside. Sean Jeffrey battling for the football against Josh Wilson. Look at everybody to the ball. Actually, Reed Dowdy. And there comes Brian Arakpo in for the interception. Tony, you mentioned it before. You had three Redskins around that pass attempt. When you're around the ball, good things happen. Reed Dowdy, Dowdy does a good job of going and running to the ball. Bounces off his shoulder. And there it is for Arakpo to bring it into the end zone. We well, just mentioned the Redskins' defense had three first-half touchdowns this season. And now Arakpo joins the party. 29-yard return, Arakpo's first career touchdown. First career pick, first career score. Hey, he's he's out out fast the momentum swings, huh, guys? Yeah, two points right there. Ryan Arakpo, here he is at the end of the line of scrimmage. He's going to chop in. Here's Reed Dowdy, too. He's the one that got me. I thought Josh Wilson had coverage. Watch him. He's going to come out. He's going to undercut. Get on to Alshon Jeffrey. He's just battling to try and get that completion and the hustle of Brian Arakpo to the ball. Like you said, Tony, good things happen when you're hustling to the football. Now, Goose, you talked about the momentum swing. Bears scored 10 points in 61 seconds earlier. Now the Redskins score 14 points in 17 seconds. I would say that would give you a little jump. So Jay Cutler and the Bears offense will get another opportunity. Early second quarter with the Redskins who trail by seven, now leading by seven. Now 
Well, we are told that the umpire, Barth DeFelice, has suffered what appears to be a hamstring injury. Very important to stretch, whether you're an official or a player. And Garth has left the field. Again, the Redskins keep it away from Hester. Dante Rosario on the return. Out to the 25-yard line. Now, well, with their struggles last week on special teams versus the Cowboys, we've seen a number of different approaches on the kickoff for the Washington Redskins. Keith Burns under the microscope this week with his group. Watched him at practice Friday. No lack of emotion from Coach Burns and his group. I tell you what, it was as hard a special team session as I have seen on a Friday Absolutely. doing kickoff coverage. Bears now down by seven. Start from their 25-yard line. Cutler hands it off, 14. Gain of just one. You just got to come back, ask the Chicago Bears after that interception by the Redskins and get back into your game. You know, one of the things that Mark Trestman preaches is having that clean game. Okay, well, that's out the window now. We're not going to have a, a turnover-free day today, but let's stay with our plan. We've got to get back in, put that play behind us. That's one of the things that separates great players at this level. When they make a mistake, they move right on to the next play. Second down at nine. It's Forte again up the middle. Out to the 26-yard line. So the umpire, Garth Felice, is injured. Let's check in with Mike Pereira. What happens, Mike, in this situation? Well, they work a man short here, and I will tell you, nobody wants to be an umpire. Although, when you move them to the offensive side of the ball, you've got a grace period now. But now this new umpire, who's never done this before, when it gets inside of two minutes of the second quarter, he's going to have to move behind that defensive line, and he's totally uncomfortable there. So we'll have to see how that's going to work out. Thanks, Mike. It's the side judge, Greg Meyer, who has moved to the umpire position. Third down and four. Cutler over the middle, incomplete, good coverage by D'Angelo Hall on Brandon Marshall, who wanted a flag. They're letting those two battle it out, Darrell. I tell you, this is going to be fun to watch. They're at the bottom of the screen. D'Angelo Hall, you talked about it last week, Tony. He went up against Des Bryant and did a tremendous job against him last week. He draws Brandon Marshall this week those are two big physical guys and he is on them like glue last week and at the start of this game again Adam Podlesh punting for the second time Joshua Morgan lets it bounce out of bounds at the 31 yard line a 38 yard kick what a turnaround for the Redskins Chicago Bears scored on two of their first three possessions, but then Cutler picked off by Arakpo, who brought it back for a touchdown, and then on their last possession, Bears go three and out. Not the response you want to have, obviously, when you have that turnover, the pick six. And there's Jay Cutler on the side with Matt Cavanaugh, quarterback's coach. Now, Matt Cavanaugh, a national championship, University of Pittsburgh, backup quarterback in San Francisco and with the Giants for Super Bowls, and then also as a coach for the Ravens. He really enjoys the opportunity to get to the sideline and talk to somebody who's done it, who's played the position on Sundays in the NFL to get his feedback. Alfred Morris gains a yard on first down with the Redskins leading the Bears 17-10. So Cavanaugh will continue to go through the photos with Jay Cutler. And it's one of those situations. Head coach Mark Trussman, he's got things he's got to be concerned with right now. So for Jay Cutler to be able to get over to the sideline and spend quality time with his quarterback coach, and then they have a great relationship. He'll take that and get it to Coach Trussman and discuss with him what they talked about. The umpire, Garth DeFelice, has returned. On the end around, Aldrich Robinson is tackled by David Bass, rookie out of Missouri Western State, loss of 11 on the play. Uh, just doing his responsibility, number 91 here. He's got contained for the end around coming the other way. 
This is one of those situations where you wish you had the signal to the quarterback. Don't give it to me on this one. He's standing right there waiting for me. You've got to take it, Robert Griffin the third. Did a nice job of getting his eyes back inside and seeing that come around. Loss of 11. Did not full bass. Now third down at 19. Redskins must get to the 41 for first down. Griffin under pressure. Look to set up the screen. And now the Redskins will punt it away. Good job by the D-line of Chicago. This is a screen, but they're getting there. The timing to be able to kind of sell this and allow those guys to go. But you see Corey Wooten, he was there kind of quick. He impacted that throw on the screen. Sam Rocca punting from his own 10-yard line. And a fair catch is called for by Eric Weems as Rocca angles it away from Hester. Entertaining first half. It's the Redskins by seven. This game is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Good field position for the Bears who have run only 13 plays. They have just two first downs but took advantage of a short field following a Tillman interception to score their touchdown. Cutler with only three completions, all to Brandon Marshall. From the 45 on first down, Cutler in trouble. Down he goes, back at the 48-yard line. Chris Baker with his first career sack. And Cutler oh is hurt. Chris Baker is going to come from the inside, all the way down on the nose, looping around. Here comes 92. Jay Cutler stepped up, thought he had an opportunity. Couldn't see anything on the replay. Chris Baker in his second season out of Hampton. Cutler had been sacked only nine times over the Bears' first six games. And he remains down on the field. Tough to see anything apparent as he's taken to the ground. Not hard by Chris Baker, but obviously in a, in a lot of pain. Josh McCown Reaching for that hip. is the Bears backup quarterback, and he has run onto the field with his helmet on. As the Bears medical staff continues to check out Cutler, there's McCown, the 11-year vet. 33 career starts, originally drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. Brother Luke, a longtime NFL quarterback as well. So Jay Cutler making his 100th career start. Obviously concerned on the look of head coach Mark Pressman. As Cutler heads to the sidelines. Very gingerly. I mean, you can see it's it's something that is uh, is really bothering him right now. Mark Tressman came to the Chicago Bears, and his, his number one priority, it was all quarterback driven. You know, getting together with Jay Cutler, you know, getting him comfortable getting people around him, you know, bring in Martellus Bennett at the tight end spot. You know, get that offensive line reconstructed. He knew how important it was to have a, a, a good quarterback who had confidence in the plan moving forward. And Tressman told us yesterday, the quarterback flies the plane. He's the most important person in the organization. So here is McCown, breaks away from Ryan Kerrigan. And McCown dives out across midfield. Now, keep in mind, he is the only other quarterback aside from Cutler on the Bears roster. Absolutely. He has got to play a little bit smarter than he did on that play. You can see Jay Cutler is just in a tremendous amount of pain as he heads into the locker room. Josh McCown, he, he, you cannot play that aggressively right now. You make a great point, Kenny. You've got an emergency quarterback on the roster, but you do not want to get to that position. Be smart. Get down. Keep yourself healthy. Third down and five. McCown 
calls timeout as he surveyed the Redskins' defense. So Josh McCown, who has not been on the field in a regular season game since 2011, over for a chat with Mark Tressman, who had great things to say about McCown when we met with him yesterday. He really did. He talked about the group that he had, he, you know, with, with Mark Tressman and Aaron Cromer and Matt Cavanaugh, and then he was quick to mention, you know, Josh McCown, another guy who's been there, done that. You know, he's played. He's been on the field as a starter, and Jay Cutler can come to him and get information from him, so... How long has Josh McCown been around? He threw the first touchdown pass of Larry Fitzgerald's career. And he also handed off to your buddy Emmett Smith when Emmett scored his last NFL touchdown. He's been around for a while. Following the timeout, third down and five for McCown and the Bears with Cutler. Back in the Chicago locker room. McCown can't find anyone downfield. And he throws it out of bounds in the, in the vicinity of Matt Forte. So the Bears will punt it away. Nowhere to go with the football on this throw. Dave Emerson. Now that's on the opposite side. Everybody's going to look. Well, Alshon Jeffrey was wide open. Yeah, but... Josh McCown's on the opposite side of the field with Ryan Kerrigan coming after him. I mean, to talk about the quarterback situation, if anything were to happen to McCown, Michael Bush was a quarterback in high school. You wonder if they would go that route. As a fair catch is called for by Morgan at the six-yard line. But the big news, the injury suffered on that last Bears possession by quarterback Jay Cutler. Redskins by seven, we check in with Goose. Hey Kenny, so uh, to give you a little update on Jay Cutler, he got all the way to the tunnel. When he went up to the tunnel, he had to stop. He couldn't walk anymore. They actually put two guys under his arms, carried him over to a golf cart, and they brought him in. And I just got a, a confirmation that he's getting some x-rays on the lower part of his body. So we'll uh, keep you updated as we find out more information. All right, thanks Goose. Redskins start from their own six yard line with a seven point lead. Hand off to Morris. Takes it up the middle, so hard to bring him down, out to the 11, gain of five. And, and that is that is a tough, ugly five yards, but that is what Alfred Morris does. There is not a lot there. I mean, there's no defined running lane. Here comes Major Wright. He's dropping down as the eighth guy into the box is your safety. Makes him miss. Just keeps fighting. He always seems to fall forward. He's always leaning forward. It's not a big deal early in the game, but as the game goes on, Daryl, a back like that wears you down as a defense. Second down at five, here's Morris again. Picks up a first down and more. Morris all the way out to the 29-yard line, finally tackled by Tillman, gain of 18. And there was a great block to get the edge secured for Alfred Morris. Watch as the play comes your way. You're going to see a great chop block. Uh, right there, Trent Williams actually with the collision with James Anderson. That's tough fighting through all those bodies. But that gets the edge sealed. Look at all those linemen on the second level on all over those linebackers. So they can't go and put an end point on that line of scrimmage. Makes a nice soft cushion there for Mars to get around. And once he's in the secondary, he's a beast. Roy Hill Jr. places Morris in the backfield as Griffin's pass is knocked down, nearly intercepted by Lance Briggs. You wonder, Tony, if they've got something off of film on that play, because that's exactly the same play we saw in the first quarter when they're riding that, that kind of option look on the inside, and there comes Lance Briggs into the throwing lane. If all of a sudden quarterback goes, you talked about Robert Griffin III kind of staring down that guy and kind of directing the defender right into that line of the throw. Exactly. When you get a young quarterback, a lot of times they won't be able, they don't look off to another receiver. They'll, if you just follow their eyes as a linebacker, as a defensive lineman, you can get the line that you're going to throw on. That's when you get your hands up, and that's exactly what we're saying. On second and ten. Out to the 37-yard line, Griffin gains eight. And I, I think we've got more proof that 
Robert Griffin III is ready for that next step. Whatever the next chapter is that Mike Shanahan has for him as he tries to get him back to 100% off of that injury from last year, he's there. He's there right now. You, you can see more of a commitment to called quarterback runs, the confidence to get into some of the option game, the read keep. 58 yards on the ground for Robert Griffin III. On five carries, third down and three. This time running to his left. And it is Anderson who makes the tackle. So the Redskins forced to punt it away. And I think that that's where we saw the big hit on with Charles Tillman early in the game. You know, he takes a big hit on the opposite side of the field. On this one here, you know, I... I just throw it out of bounds right now. Throw it out of bounds. You're outside the pocket. Get it beyond the line of scrimmage. Don't take that unnecessary hit at the end of the play. Loss of six on the play. Rocco punting for the third time. Again, they have to toward the sidelines. And Hester running from west to east. He's got a line set up. He's across midfield. Down the sideline. Hester will take it all the way. 81 yards for a Bears touchdown. His first return touchdown in 29 games. You have to have a feel. If, if you're going downfield in coverage, you've got to feel that guy on your outside shoulder, and you cannot allow him to block you down inside. Every Bear player was running on the outside. Here's Devin Hester here. Now watch, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see that exact same look on every cover guy. A bear to his left. And watch everybody start to get collapsed down, collapsed down, no contain. Here comes your wall. Now you got the old-fashioned picket fence down the sideline. I mean, to have a performance like last week and emphasize it and talk about it and then come in and have the same thing happen this week is just unacceptable for the Bears, for the Redskins special teams. It's great to see all those guys pile on, man, because it's a, definitely a team effort on that score. Hester's 13th career punt return for a touchdown, which extends his NFL record. It is his 19th career return touchdown, and that also includes a missed field goal return, and that ties your former teammate, Deion Sanders, for the all-time NFL mark. And one of the things he did this week, he actually reached out to Brian Mitchell, who had success beyond the age of 30 in the return game. Five return touchdowns after Brian Mitchell turned 30. One of the things you'll find out, you know, you won't have that breakaway speed. It becomes more of a team effort. You get blocks like that down the sideline. Look at all the teammates that are escorting Devin Hester down the sideline. You know, you don't have that breakaway speed, that make you miss in a confined space when you're 30, 31 years old. And Brian Mitchell told him that, you know, it becomes more of a team and, and reading their blocks and, and having their trust. So Devin Hester went 28 games without a return touchdown. And he returns the punt 81 yards for a score against the Redskins. Special teams unit that allowed a touchdown on a block punt for the Oakland Raiders back in week four. They allowed two long returns. Dwayne Harris of the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night. And now Hester doing it to the Redskins here today. So the Bears, who have 47 yards, Darrell, of total offense, have scored 17 points. Back to their defense and special teams, and now the ball comes loose. And it's recovered by Niles Paul. And there's Keith, Keith Burns, the special teams coach for the Washington Redskins. And listen, he emphasized it all week. He challenged his guys. You've got to have veteran leadership step up. They're missing Lorenzo Alexander, who was a special teams pro bowler last year. You just can't replace a guy like that. So the players out here, you've got to step up. The veteran players, if you're designated as a special teams guy, you know, you've got to get together with your group and challenge them to take some pride in what they're doing. I mean, it, it's just, it's hurting the team. Mike Shanahan invoked Lorenzo Alexander's name this week. He said Lorenzo Alexander is not going to show up. Somebody has to take control on special teams. Alexander now in Arizona. As Morris 
takes it up the middle out to the 32 yard line for a gain of five. Well, just like we talked about the Chicago Bears, you know, bouncing back after the interception by Jay Cutler that Brian Arakpo took back for a touchdown. This offense has to do the same now. What a disparity, yet the score is tied. Now keep in mind, Jay Cutler is in the locker room. Suffered an injury, went sacked by Chris Baker on the Bears' last possession. As Morris tried to cut it back inside, but... Shane McClellan had other ideas. But well, well, yeah, Shane McClellan made the tackle, but I don't know who that was that made the play, Tony. But he Jonathan Bostic. Wow. He came up and stuck him in the backfield. You're exactly right. He didn't make the tackle, but he made the play. And he's congratulated as he heads off the field, making his first NFL start today for the injured DJ Williams, the longtime Bronco. Third down and six. Redskins must get to the 36-yard line. Griffin throws, and the catch is made for a first down. Guess who? It is Jordan Reed, Bostick's teammate at the University of Florida. Griffin has six completions today, and five of the six have gone to Reed. You could see it at practice on Friday that he was going to be featured. He was going to be isolated in certain situations where if they got the matchup that they liked one-on-one, -on -one, they were going to go to Jordan Reed. But he's been drawing some good guys in coverage. You know, they've got to figure out something because right now he is uh, he's the big thorn in the side of the Chicago Bears in the passing game. Five receptions for Reed, 84 yards. On the 45-yard line, penalty marker as Griffin is down back at the 40-yard line. for a call from the officials. They're, they're huddled up over there. Kenny can hear them. Here's Cleve Blakeman, Deuce. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Defense. Number 97. A yard penalty. Automatic first down. Brandon Cohen. Keep your eyes open for number 97 right there. You can see the hands going up underneath the face mask of Chris Chester. Second Bears penalty. So first and ten for the Redskins at midfield. The toss to Roy Hill Jr. And it is Cohen. Coming through along with Bostic, loss of three on the play. Unbelievable the penetration you're seeing. Corey Wooten just gets into the backfield, but Bostic, he's a man on the mission. Here he is, number 57, right here. Watch the penetration from the defensive lineman up, up front. Here's Bostic, goes, wraps him up. Look at the rest of the guys running through the ball. Trust your instincts, right, Goose? As soon as that guard blocks down, he's just shooting that gap. Unbelievable the penetration after getting up front. It makes it really hard for the backs to cut back or, or change direction when you get that penetration. Second down and 13. Again, pressure. And the catch is made by Roy Hallou Jr. out of the backfield at the Bears' 48 for a gain of five and two and a half remaining in this second quarter. And don't forget, this is a next man up mentality in that defensive front. Kenny Henry, Melton, Nate Collins, your starters are out. They're on IR right now as your defensive tackles. Corey Wooten has actually been kicked down inside from a defensive end position. So uh, these guys getting tremendous amounts of push and penetration out here this afternoon. Yeah, watching Corey Wooten, one thing that I'm really identifying with him is he has tremendous timing of coming off the ball when that snap goes down. Good job by some of the other guys. Filling roles, Landon Cohen, David Mass with big plays. We've hit the two-minute warning, tied at 17. Devin Hester on the left. A one-yard punt return for a touchdown, which tied this game. 
So the Bears, despite only 47 yards of offense, now they've lost quarterback Jay Cutler. Tied at 17 with the Redskins, who face third down and eight. Empty backfield, Redskins must get to the 40. As Griffin throws, and it's a first down and more. Pierre Garçon out of bounds at the 31-yard line, a gain of 18. Yeah, lots of vertical routes clearing the field, and then Pierre Garçon comes across that, that middle of the field on a shallow route, has plenty of room to run after the catch. From the 31, Roy Hillary Jr. makes the handoff from Griffin. And he's knocked back, loses the yard. Everybody talks about when you play a zone blocking scheme in the run game, as a defender, you've got to get push and penetration. And a lot of times it doesn't happen, but right now the Chicago Bears defensive line is doing just that. Really disruptive in the run game. Second down at 11 off the fake to Halu. Griffin falls wide open. Letter Hackerson. And Hackerson stepped out of bounds at the four-yard line. 27-yard pass play. Well, you had a breakdown in coverage because you had corner and safety deep in the field, and this is why. Watch this play action. Great sell. Here comes the bootleg. Leonard Hankerson, he comes across the field. There is nobody there. Charles Tillman, Chris Conti, there they are. They're both deep down the field in coverage. Robert Griffin the third also. Great pass. Run into his left and throws across his body to make a great, great play on that. Griffin four for four on this drive. It is first and goal from the Bears four. And the Redskins are forced to use a timeout with the play clock winding down. It is their second Washington timeout. It's its second timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. Go back to the end of this run with Leonard Hankerson to see where he's out of bounds and we'll see how he gets with the pylon. It's like he was out of bounds. Now we are inside two minutes. That play would have to be reviewed upstairs. Hackerson was ruled to have stepped out of bounds. The previous play is under review. But they will take a look at it. Hackerson was ruled to have stepped out at the four. It was close. And then Hackerson going for the pylon. We'll check in with Mike Pereira in Los Angeles. Mike, what did you see on that flight? Well, here's the issue here. Normally, when a runner has ruled to have stepped out of bounds, you can't review it. However, if you get to this point where his next step after that step out of bounds is a dive to the pylon or dive to the end zone, you can take it through that process. So they're going to look to see if they confirm that he didn't, if they can confirm that he didn't step out of bounds, which I kind of don't think they can. But if they do, then they can go ahead and extend this and make it a touchdown because he does look like he gets the ball. Well, does he get it over? Does he get it over the pylon before the left foot hits out of bounds or the right foot yeah, again? Looked look like the right foot hit, hit out of bounds before definitely. the ball hit the pylon. Yeah. Yeah, that last angle might right. certainly look like see that. he did step out. Yeah, they can't. But the, the other aspect is this is one play where they can take it beyond where they ruled that foot stepped out of bounds. But I think you're right. You actually see that right toe hit before he gets there. So he is short. So if it is ruled that he did not step out at the four, it will most likely be first and goal around the one-yard line. It is a booth review with a minute 20 remaining in the second quarter. There's Josh McCown who took over for the injured Jay Cutler. Bears tied the score at 17 on an 81-yard punt return for a touchdown by Devin Hester. Mike Shanahan awaiting the official announcement from referee Cleet Blakeman.
after review of the play. The ruling on the field stands. Corey Bossing gets the ball, first and goal from the five yard line. So the call stands following the reception by Hankerson. First and goal from just inside the five. I think Mike Shanahan, he was lobbying for that timeout that they called at the end of that play to get into review, and he is not allowed to have that back. Redskins also wasted that timeout earlier when they had the ball inside the one with the clock winding down. The one timeout remaining for Washington. Griffin out of the shotgun on first and goal. Morris. Down inside the three for the two-yard line. We've talked about the Redskins' issues in the red zone Sunday night in Dallas. First trip inside the 20 today. They were held to a field goal and then a 14-yard touchdown run by Roy Hallou Jr. early in the second quarter. End play of the drive, upcoming, second and goal. From the Bears, too. Morris in the backfield. Off the fake to Morris. Griffin throws low. Looking for Paulson in the end zone. But again, we're seeing more and more evidence of his ability to start to make plays. You drop back on the play action. Pressure right in your face. Step up, throw, weave your way through. Logan Paulson drops in. He's open. Robert Griffin III just can't get it to him. So now, third and goal. Timeout called by the Bears. What's coming up on the Visa Halftime Report? We check in with Kurt Metafee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll see if Tom Brady can keep Boston in a celebratory mood as the Patriots take on the Jets. It's a battle of first-place teams as the Bengals visit the Lions, and the Jaguars will try to get that first win of the season. Plus, I'll go out and join those guys, because I don't think I'm really supposed to be in here. It's all on the Visa Halftime. Well, we know they look forward to it, Kurt. Visa Halftime Report coming up. Tied at 17, 33 seconds remaining in this first half. It will be third and goal for the Redskins from the Chicago 2. Jordan Reed split wide to the right. Nobody's covering him. And now running across Chris Conte. Griffin to Reed in the end zone. And it is ruled a touchdown. He came down in bounds. As you said, Kenny, late recognition by the Chicago Bears defense with somebody that should not lose in the alignment, and that's Jordan Reed at the top. Chris Conte has got to huff it out there real quick so you know he's going to be out of position a little bit as this play starts. Actually does a nice job of getting set, and then it's just your simple fade route to the outside. Every scoring play is reviewed, so they are taking... Another look at it upstairs. So first we check possession. Two feet down and then through the process of the catch as he goes to the ground, does he maintain possession? Looks like he's got all three of them. Cleet Blakeman announcing that the play is under review. If it stands, it will be the second touchdown for... Jordan Reed this season and the first touchdown pass in the first half of a game for Robert Griffin the third. A, B, and C. Possession, two feet down. Complete the process. Charles Tillman sure was right about Jordan Reed. You know, until today, he, he has been featured this afternoon in this first half. And, you know, he told us when we talked to him, he said, yeah, you know, I watch him on film, but I, I think they could get more out of him. You know, he can, he can do some things in a matchup situation, and that's what he talked to us about, you know, the comparison to Jermichael Finley. Maybe the, obviously not the size, but the athletic ability and the matchup issue. Reed was a quarterback in high school. 
and then missed much of the spring after the draft with a thigh contusion. But he has had a breakout game today with six receptions for 87 yards and a touchdown if it is confirmed upstairs. And he's improving week to week as a blocker, so he's becoming that more complete tight end. While we await the call from Cleet Blakeman, down for an update on Jay Cutler with Goose. Hey, Kenny, just got the word from the PR department of the Chicago Bears. They said Jay Cutler has a groin and questionable return. So uh, we'll follow up with that uh, during halftime. All right, thanks, Tony. 27 seconds remaining. Second quarter. Wild first half here at Landover, Maryland. We've seen a defensive touchdown, a score on special teams. But seeing the Redskins bounce back from that first opening game drive where they got into the red zone and you can get into some of those same struggles as you had the week before and had two nice drives for touchdowns. After review of the play, the receiver had solid control and possession of the ball. Two feet down in the end zone, the ruling on the is confirmed it is a touchdown. So Reed can celebrate again. Redskins back on top. Seventeen, Washington. Well, late recognition on Jordan Reed split out wide to the right. Chris Conti hustles out there, does a good job of getting into position before the snap. But now it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation, and it's that simple fade. Trusting the athleticism of your tight end in that mashup. Great location of the football by Robert Griffin III. doing it with his legs and his arm in the first half. Six completions to Reed. RG3 with 58 yards on the ground. And the Redskins who have not led at halftime of any game so far this season. Lead by seven. Bears without Jay Cutler. As Goose reported moments ago, groin injury, his return is questionable. There's Hester, who brought a punt back for a touchdown earlier. Bears have had the ball only seven and a half minutes. They have 47 yards of offense. Good news is you score a touchdown. Bad news is you have to kick off. But only 27 seconds remaining in the quarter. <laughs> you can return it in shorter time than that. Redskins keep it on the ground. This is Joe Anderson on the return. Josh Hall, one of three players signed by the Redskins this week to help on special teams. Makes the tackle. Here's Josh McCown back on the field following the injury suffered on the sack of Jay Cutler by Chris Baker. Yeah, tough to really see anything definitive there on the sack of Jay Cutler, but obviously as he was leaving the field uh, in a tremendous amount of pain, you'll see right here as he goes up the tunnel. He'll be barely able to walk. And we all know how important Jay Cutler is to this Bears organization. Think back to the 2011 season. Cutler injured in game 10. Bears 7-3 and three at the time. Lost their next five. Missed the playoffs. So Mark Tressman heads into the locker room, trailing by seven without his quarterback. Redskins lead 24-17. Visa halftime report is coming up next. Today we get our breakthrough. You gotta see it. You gotta believe it. And then we're gonna go out there and take it. Robert Griffin the third and the Redskins lead the Chicago Bears by seven. As we welcome you back, the Bears lost Jay Cutler in the first half to a groin injury. He will not return, and the statistics heavily favor Washington. Only 46 yards of offense for the Bears. They have the football for under eight minutes. 
Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Bears won the coin toss to third, so they will get the ball first here in the second half. As Hester and Weems switch spots. It's Weems in the end zone, and Hester now the up back at the 10-yard line. That's where we saw Formath kick it earlier. Kickoff rolls through the end zone, so the Bears will start on the 20-yard line. A Bears team, Darrell, as we mentioned, only 46 yards of offense in the first half, but uh, they've done it with defense and also scored on special teams. And how many times have we seen this in the past where Chicago does not play well offensively, but their defense and their special teams carries them? You can't go to sleep on them. Jay Cutler is out. It's going to be Josh McCown here in the second half, but you've got Matt Forte in the backfield. You've got Martellus Bennett, Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall. You have skill players to get the ball to, and don't forget about that defense and those special teams. Oh, it's... Josh McCown, who remains in at quarterback, Cutler will not return to the game. First and ten from the 20-yard line. The handoff to Matt Forte, and he takes it out to the 32 for a first down, a gain of 12. Finally tackled by former Bear Brandon Merriweather as we check in downstairs with Goose. Thanks, Kenny. Talk to Coach Mark Tressman uh, ab about... You know, he said to me, I said, this first half was pretty crazy, outrageous. One thing he said is, as, as crazy and outrageous as it was, we're only down seven points. And with Josh McCown going in, he's been in the league for a long time. We will not go and shorten any of our offense. He's fully capable of running everything we need to do here in the second half. McCown, an 11-year vet. He's played for a number of clubs. Here's Forte, who gained only nine yards on the ground in the first half. He has 14 on his first two carries in the third quarter. And one of the groups that we've been talking about since the, the start of the game is the Chicago Bears offensive line. Jermon Bushrod, Matt Slauson brought in in free agency. Kyle Long, Jordan Mills drafted on the right side. It, this is this is a much better offensive line. They're going to come off the ball. There's a lot of weapons here. This Redskin defense has got to finish this game. Suck it down at eight. Off the fake to Forte. McCown rolling to his right. Now he throws, intended for Jeffrey, nearly intercepted by the rookie out of NC State. David Amerson, third and eight upcoming. Are you going to run a little bootleg? Watch Alshon Jeffrey push up the field. He's going to beat the deep element on the bootleg to the outside. But good coverage by David Amerson. Amerson suffered a concussion in Dallas on Sunday. Back in the Redskins lineup. Second round pick. Third down and eight. There's only three first downs in this game. And they are 0 for 4 on third down. The count throws, and the catch is made by a wide open Brandon Marshall. So a new set of downs for the Bears, a 14 yard reception. This is just well done right here. Brandon Marshall down the field finds the soft spot in the zone. Marshall still the only bear to catch a pass today. He has four receptions. Three from Cutler, now one from McCown. McCown's first completion since the 2011 season as Forte gains a couple out to midfield. And you heard Tony's report with Mark Tressman that Josh McCown has been in the league. We're not going to have to sacrifice anything offensively from our game plan, but you may shift what you want to focus on. And, and I think that that's one of the big things that, that you have going on here. And remember, Jim Haslett told us, Kenny, that the most dangerous guy on the offensive side of the ball, in his opinion, was Matt Forte. And he's going to be a viable option in the run game and the pass game. Suck it down at eight. Snap, the count, they're going to get rid of it, and it is Marshall at the Redskins 44-yard line. Now it has ruled an incompletion, so it will be third down and eight. Again, if you join us late, Jay Cutler knocked out in the second quarter, groin injury, will not return, so it's Josh McCown, and here's his last throw. Intended for Marshall. McCown, the only other quarterback on the Bears roster. Bears public relations staff tells us they're not sure what the Bears would do, who the emergency quarterback would be. 
Something would have happened to McCown. Backup running back Michael Bush was a high school quarterback, so they could go that route if need be. Third down and eight. McCown hit as he throws. And then the ball hit the ground. There is a flag as McCown took that hit as he got rid of the football from Josh Wilson. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 98, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. There was Wilson, and then Arakpo came in. Wow, if they're going to let guys come in the middle of the field like that on your quarterback, they might start worrying about who they're going to put in as a third quarterback, Kenny. Yeah, but you know what, Tony? I don't think that was helmet to helmet. I think if you, I think it's face mask in the chest by Brian Arakpo on Josh McCown. I totally agree. I'm just talking about the hit. Oh, I, you know, yeah. guys, I mean, they got to do a better job up front of giving him some protection. So the penalty keeps the Bears' drive alive. First and ten from the Redskins, 35. Down to the near side, Earl Bennett. And Bennett having a break free, pick up some extra yardage to the Redskins. 24, gain of 11. And this was an issue for the Redskins at the start of the season, was poor tackling. They've kind of gotten it back under control. Your first guy in is actually tackling the football. That's for the second guy in. You've got to secure the tackle, get him wrapped up. Let the second guy on the scene try and strip that football. Second and seven upcoming. Time for a game break with Joel Klatt. Joel? Thank you, Kenny. And we go to Philadelphia. No DeMarco Murray for Dallas. No problem. Philip Tanner. First TD of the season. It's 10-0 Dallas. Remember, no DeMarcus Ware in that ball game either. Kenny Moose and Goose. Yeah, no DeMarco Murray, but I, I tell you what, in Dallas, they were excited about Philip Tanner. Joseph Randall, they felt confident that they had some guys to control that run game. Now here's the Bears run game as Forte on first down takes it inside the Redskins 15-yard line. London Fletcher finally brought him down. A very smooth runner in space, Matt Forte. He's a big guy, but uh, just, just very fluid in his movements. You saw right there, able to elude that initial tackle. Second down and one for the Bears with Josh McCown at quarterback for the injured Jake Cutler. Forte only nine yards in the first half, 28 on this drive. Second and one, and this time it is Marakbo who wraps up Matt Forte. Now you got no chance when you have a defender three yards deep into your backfield. Sliding all the way down pre-snap. Very difficult for Martellus Bennett to be able to get across the face. Now, Matt Forte really, as the runner, has to kind of recognize that. He can see that shift by Arakpo late in that play that he's coming down inside. Arakpo with a touchdown earlier on an interception return. Now third down and three for McCown and the Bears. Moving to his right, under pressure. McCown throws it away. He's taking some hits here on the opening drive of the second half. And it's, uh, I think it's affected his confidence. Here he is in the pocket, looking downfield. He feels the pressure backside by Arakpo. There's a smart move of just getting rid of the ball in that situation. He could have done it a little bit sooner. Yeah. Redskin secondary had good coverage all across the board. And the count still in bounds when Arakpo made the initial contact, so no flags. 34-yard attempt from the right hash, Robbie Cole. His kick is no good. Wide to the right. His first miss of the season. So the Redskins lead remains seven. 
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. By Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by Pizza Hut. Prep for game day by ordering online from Pizza Hut. Make it great. Redskins take over on offense following the missed field goal. Early third quarter leading by seven. Redskins start from the 24-yard line. RG3 on the keeper. Goes short of the first down marker. We take you back to the field goal now. This could not be reviewed if the ball crosses above the top of the upright. It is not reviewable, and the entire ball must pass inside the outside edge of the upright. And you can see both the officials underneath the upright. They have the best perspective looking straight up as that ball crosses. Bowles' first miss of the season. He had hit 13 in a row dating back to last year. Second down and one. Here's Morris. And it's Briggs again. Well, he just never seems to, to slow down. Right? It's... it's Tremendous instincts, finding his way to the football. Just always seems to be in the right spot at the right time. We've seen him slide into the throwing lanes of Robert Griffin III. Look at the feel. Understanding that everything's bottled up inside. If, if Alfred Morris is going to come back this way, he's going to come out here, and i got to just slide over and be ready to make that tackle. Yeah, he Great plays field. very well off his defensive line. Seventh tackle for Bridge today. Third down and one. Griffin on third down, as intended, the Leonard Hankerson Redskins will punt. There's a situation we talked about with Robert Griffin III. You know, if it's not perfect, if it's not drawn up exactly right, if it's not executed exactly right, we still have to make the play. This ball is behind Leonard Hankerson as he's moving across, but you got to make that catch. Convert for the first down, continue this drive. So here's Hester, who brought back the last Savrock of punt, 81 yards. For a touchdown, tying Deion Sanders' NFL record, 19th career return touchdown. No chance for Hester this time, as it is down just inside the 20-yard line. It's about much more than pink on the field. Together, the NFL and the American Cancer Society are helping women across the country make a crucial catch. Here are the personal impact stories and find out how you can help finish the fight against Breast cancer at NFL.com slash pink. Tanya Snyder, wife of Redskins owner Daniel Snyder, a breast cancer survivor. Help finish the fight at NFL.com slash pink. There's Tanya. Redskins leading by seven. Josh McCown of the Bears start from their own 20. McCown for the injured Jay Cutler. The pass is caught by Jeffrey. And Jeffrey takes it all the way out across. The 40, Reed Dowdy finally makes the tackle again of 22. A couple reasons why this play was so successful. Number one, location by Josh McCown out in front of Alshon Jeffrey, and then the block by Brandon Marshall, 15, coming down the field, walling out the defenders. Martellus Bennett, there's your lineman down the field. Jeffrey's first catch today. and 10 from the 42-yard line. A count over the middle, and the catch is made by Earl Bennett. He takes a hard hit from Dowdy. Bennett, gain of eight, out to midfield. Yeah, Dowdy and Chris Baker. Chris Baker hustling down the field as a defensive lineman. So there's Josh Wilson on the initial contact. Here comes Reed Dowdy from the safety spot from your right. And right after that, Chris Baker coming from the other direction, from the D-line. It was Baker who sack knocked Jay Cutler out of the game in the second quarter. Second down and two. Inside handoff to Forte. He picks up a first down and more. Forte's still going. Inside the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, 50 yards, Matt Forte.
And there was nobody there. Just a little cutback. He gets into the secondary. A great move once he's in the secondary to break into the clear. London Fletcher's here. Ryan Kerrigan's going to be coming from the outside. They don't get anything. Look at that hole. And then that little jump cut right there. That smooth, fluid move of Matt Forte. He doesn't need much to get it all the way down the field. It was Brandon Marshall again. We saw him on the big play to Alshon Jeffrey to start this drive and another good block to finish it. Gold has the extra point. We are tied at 24 as Forte took the handoff at midfield into the end zone for a Bears touchdown. Matt Forte, more yards on that run than the Bears gained in the entire first half. You can't go to sleep on this team. They're without their starting quarterback, but there is a lot of talent. One of the reasons why Jay Cutler was at ease with us over the weekend, the offensive line has improved. They've added Martellus Bennett at the tight end spot, a viable threat down the field from that position. And then don't forget, Matt Forte, Jim Hazlitt could not say enough nice things about him. London Fletcher knows how good of a running back he is. Joshua Morgan on the return for the Redskins. And Morgan did not make it. Out to the 20. Well, the Bears have tied the game. Forte takes it 50 yards. Here in Landover, congratulated by Hester. Welcome back, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa, Bears, Redskins, tied at 24. Six and a half remaining, third quarter, Redskins start from their 17-yard line. Albert Morris cuts it back inside, and Morris has a Redskins first down out to the 31 a game. Of 14. Now, he does a really nice job of reading that zone block in front, I'll tell you. Yeah, he really does. And wow. That was one of the things I asked Coach Shanahan about. It was, just, was he just a natural zone runner in college at Florida Atlantic? And that's when he told us, no, it was more of the, his style, how physical he was and how he turned negatives into positives. Off the fake to Morris. Griffin out of bounds at the 33, and then he's knocked down by Bostick. He is considered a runner there, right? And Lance Briggs is injured. He's slow to get up for the Bears. As we take another look at Bostick ripping again, still in bounds on the initial contact. But the concern for the Bears is Lance Briggs, who is heading off the field. And there was a little bit made this week about Robert Griffin on the sidelines as we watch Lance Briggs head over to his sideline, but you know they went back to Rasheen Mathis playing the Detroit game, a couple of hits last week in Dallas on the edge. Um, it's just part of the game at this stage. Try and track down Lance Briggs right here as he's in pursuit of Robert Griffin III. He's caught off of Logan Paulson, so Blake Costanzo, very good special teams player, number 52, replaces Briggs. Griffin hit again on second down. Patch is made by Reed. And now Robert Griffin the third. He's slow to get up. Here he comes. Showing some good arm strength here. He's going to have pressure right into his face. Doesn't get the full follow through. See how he lands. Gets spun around. Luckily, it looks like he landed on his chest, not on that shoulder. On the hit from Shane McClellan. Reed picks up a first down, his seventh reception. Seven catches, 98 yards, and a touchdown for the rookie tight end, Jordan Reed. Now the handoff to Morris, and he's brought down by James Anderson along with Landon Cohen. Never be without football. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download it now. I mean, it didn't look like much, but it's second and five again. I mean, it's just Alfred Morris just pushes that pile. Briggs still on the sidelines, off the play fake. Griffin throws, and it is a first down and more for Alter Robinson. Robinson for the Bears, 21. 
Yeah, this is really nice. Aldrick Robinson crossing all the way from the left side of the field. Charles Tillman in pursuit. The throw on the run with two defenders in his face. Outstanding by Robert Griffin III. 31-yard pass play. Well, the Redskins on the move from the Bears, 21. Roy Hallou Jr. Still on his feet. Good second and third effort by Hallou. I tell you, he does good stuff every time he gets an opportunity. Roy Hallou Jr., when Alfred Morris needs a break, they don't lose a whole lot. He had a terrific rookie season. Did three play last year. Has a touchdown earlier today. And is tackled as he was heading towards the end zone by Craig Stelz. The pace of this offense has really affected the defense. You see the communication. They're not lining up. A lot of guys asking questions. And again, it's Briggs who usually gets them lined up, Goose. He's out of the game. On first and goal, Roy Hallou Jr. Cuts to the end zone. He's in it. His second touchdown today. Great patience. Staying on that line in the zone blocking scheme. You stay on a line and then cut. Watch Roy Hallou Jr.'s patient, patient, patient. Now, there's the foot planted into the ground, into the end zone. Here's Forbath. Redskins back on top by seven. First career two-touchdown game for Roy Hallou, Jr. Second touchdown today for Roy Hallou, Jr. Redskins drive eight plays, 83 yards to regain the lead. A Redskin team over their first five games that led for only 25 minutes and two seconds. They've had a lead for more time today. They had more touchdowns on offense in the first half today than in their first five games as well. Yeah, this, this offense has woken up. You can see on the sideline, Robert Griffin III having a good time with Kyle Shanahan right there. I love his speech, the challenge to the team today to fight through all the adversity of the first five weeks of the season and have that breakthrough game this afternoon. Weems behind Hester. Playing in his second game with the Redskins. And Keith Burns certainly like that. <laughs> Finally something to cheer about this afternoon. Listen, folks. Wow. They get off his feet right now. Ah, it's just a great form tackle. And it's infectious, Tony. You know how the, this is an emotional game. The offense has generated the excitement, the emotion. The special teams carried it out onto the field in that coverage. There's Gardens out of Monmouth University. Miles Austin's alma mater. Cowboys wide out. So Josh McCown of the Bears go to work from their 11-yard line. McCown for the injured Jay Cutler. And he takes off, picks up a first down, and then smartly slides out to the 25-yard line. Yeah, we saw him early in the process of taking over for Jay Cutler, and he was a little bit more aggressive. He's got to be smart. And he gets down just in time. McCown, we mentioned earlier, 33 career starts. He's been with Arizona, Detroit, Oakland, Miami, Carolina. Also played in the UFL. He was coaching high school football in North Carolina two years ago before the Bears call when Cutler suffered his injury. Receiver screen to Marshall, and Marshall using his strength up the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the 30. Got a Brandon Marshall update real quick. Uh, he's got a shoulder problem, and uh, it's probable to return, Kenny. It was Lance Briggs, right? Lance Briggs, I mean. I'm sorry about that. All right, thanks, Goose.
Brandon Marshall made that big of an impression on you, huh? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm watching him <laughs> talking about the Lance. Woo. The bridge return is probable. That's certainly good news for the Bears. Cutler has been ruled out with the groin injury. Second down and four. The count looking for Jeffrey who makes the catch. It's thrown on Brandon Merriweather. Physical game going on here. Yeah. Some big hits. Going to be a hit on a defenseless player. They'll probably... Helmet to helmet contact. Yeah, lead with the head. Early on the field, it's a completed pass. We also have a personal foul. This is Revenus. I know all the fans are booing here on the call, but that's that's classic. I mean, it's he's right under the face mask of all Sean Jeffrey. That's the way the rule has changed as they try to eliminate targeting up high on the defenseless players designated in this game. So that's Merriweather, who played for the Bears two seasons ago, a two-time Pro Bowler with the Patriots prior to that. So a 28-yard reception and then tack on the 15-yard penalty. Four straight completions for McCow. From the Redskins, 28. To the outside, this is Marquise Wilson, rookie out of Washington State. His first career reception, gain of three. All Sean Jeffrey on the sideline after that hit, and we're losing Bear football players. Jake Cutler is out. Lance Briggs left last series with a shoulder injury, and Kenny made a great point. He is the guy that coordinates that defense. Washington got into that up-tempo, and it looked like they struggled to keep pace with their calls. Already without the veteran middle linebacker, D.J. Williams, so you have a rookie in Bostick in the middle, and then Briggs is out, and the Redskins score the go-ahead touchdown. Here's Forte. And Forte is met by the 16-year veteran, the four-time Pro Bowler, London Fletcher still going strong. Yeah. Never ceases to amaze me, London Fletcher. How about... Uh, uh, the ageless Dang, wonder. Goose. The ageless wonder, Goose. I mean, it's. I mean, we've seen him in run defense, but I've, I've watched him down the field with Martellus Bennett, who's Coverage, very yeah. athletic at the tight end in coverage. Having trouble with our names now, Goose? I'll tell you what, man, there's a lot going on down here with all these injuries, and Lance Briggs is on his way out right now from the from the locker room. Time winding down in this third quarter. As the Redskins... We'll take a seven-point lead into the fourth. Forte tied the game, but then Halu put the Redskins back on top. We start the fourth quarter. There is Lance Briggs, who has returned to the Bears' sideline. Yeah, doing some strength tests on him over there. That's uh, that's not fair. I mean, how do you tell? I mean, Lance Briggs is going to be stronger than almost anybody over there on that sideline. That's right. Third down and six. For Chicago, the count to Earl Bennett. David Harrison made the tackle, and Bennett looks to have a Bears first down. So Chicago in the red zone, trailing by seven without their starting quarterback. Jay Cutler suffered a groin injury back in the second quarter. Good news for the Bears offense. Alshon Jeffrey back in. Took that hard helmet to helmet hit from Brandon Merriweather moments ago. Forte up the middle. Gain of one to the Redskins. 16 yard line. Reed Dowdy and Curry Riley Jr. combined on the tackle. Impressed with Josh McCown coming in under these circumstances, and Mark Trestman said, we, we don't lose a lot of our offense. I think they've probably changed what they want to feature with Josh in there, but he has done uh, he's done a nice job stepping in. You can look at the yardage total here in the second half. Bears barely had the ball the first half, seven and a half minutes. Two first downs for Chicago in the first half, ten cents. Play clock at two. 
The count on second and nine. Steps up. Takes off. Inside the ten. And tackled by Riley. At the six. So McCown picks up a first down with his legs. I'd like to see him slide, though. You know, we're, we're, yeah, we're not sure who the emergency quarterback is. And you're, you're one hit away from being in that position. So I know you're striving to get that first down. But you can... And just get there, maybe get it with the slide, but boy, look at all those Redskin jerseys there. Now they are well aware that there's no other quarterback on the Bears roster. McCown with 33 yards on the ground on four carries. First and goal from the six. Up the middle, it's 14. He's in for a touchdown. As we've seen some really good run blocking when we've gotten into the red zone on both teams. Matt Forte is just coming up into the middle right here. Kyle Long on the trap. Gets the movement on Stephen Bowen. I tell you, that is tough on a short pull to be able to get leverage and movement on somebody in the red zone. Nice block by Kyle Long. Third touchdown of the game for Matt Forte. First time in his career he has rushed for three in one game. Tied at 31. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by Subway Restaurants. Try the Tuscan Chicken Melt today. This game is tied for the fifth time today. We were tied at 3-10, 17-24, and now 31 following the Bears' nine-way, 89-yard drive. Just slugging it out. I mean, these offenses, very impressive. Long, sustained drives for these touchdowns. Redskins with a no, no. defensive touchdown in the second quarter, and then they're scored on special teams. Devin Hester, 81-yard punt return for a touchdown. Matt Forte with three TDs today. Roy Hulu Jr. has two for the Redskins. So with just under 13 minutes remaining, Redskins will start from their 20-yard line, tied at 31. Coming up this Wednesday will be Game 1 of the 2013 World Series as the Boston Red Sox host the St. Louis Cardinals. Shane Victorino with a big blow last night. Grand Slam at Fenway setting the Red Sox to their third World Series in 10 years. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver on the call. Game 1 Wednesday night gets underway on Fox Sports Live with a World Series special. And then first pitch at 7.30 Eastern. On Fox. Morris in the backfield. Robert Griffin the third rolling to his right. Being chased. And he steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Again, it's six time for a game break with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, thank you, Kenny. Let's head up to Detroit. Matt Stafford's going to have all the time in the world. And finally, just chuck it up there. You know why? Because he's got Megatron. And the mid... Triple coverage, second touchdown of the day, 24-24. All right, thanks, Joel. Here's RG3. And he has a Redskins first down out across the 30. And I tell you, his, his ball handling as the quarterback today has fooled me on a couple of occasions. Some great, great ball skills here. And you've got Bear defenders that are chasing running backs that don't have the possession that he is out on the perimeter. Lance Briggs still on the sideline does not have his helmet. Go for the shoulder injury earlier as Morris. Out across midfield. Not even Julius Peppers can bring him down. He's like a bulldozer going through that line. That's one guy I would not want to arm tackle. I'll tell you that right now. No. The way he runs, how low he is, where he holds the ball. He just keeps driving those legs, driving those legs. And everybody tackles him high. I don't understand why. 
to be taking a guy like that, take his legs away from him. Morris now with 86 yards, season high 17 carries. This is Roy Hill Jr. Through the 45. And, you know, a nice combination when Alfred Morris goes out for rest. Roy Hill Jr. has had a, a nice afternoon as well, Tony. Been a fan of his for a couple Absolutely. years now before Alfred got here. He's becoming a complete back. Was, was real good in the passing game. Now, don't forget about RG3. When you add in his yards on the ground, Redskins have 189 rushing yards today. Now, Griffin looking to throw. He fires downfield. Aldrick Robinson waiting, and he makes the catch. A spectacular catch for a Redskins touchdown. You're not going to see this very often. Charles Tillman misplaying a ball. He actually has Joshua Morgan open underneath. That's where I would have thrown the ball. It was a wide open crossing route about 15 yards down the field. So watch this open up, but he goes for the home run here over the top. But Charles Tillman is going to fall down right at the point of the catch. This is going to be an easy interception for one of the best. A little collision there. You lose one defender, and then Charles Tillman mistimes his play on the football. Ball back, the extra point. Redskins once again lead by seven. As Robinson makes the catch with Tillman and Conti defending. What a game. Aldrick Robinson, all smiles. His first touchdown of the season. Longest pass of the season for RG3. This time it took the Redskins only five plays. It is the sixth lead change of the game. Both Devin Hester and Eric Weems back deep. We've seen them exchange spots on a couple of occasions as Forbath keeps it on the ground and it's Hester who comes all the way up to scoop up the football. And he brings it out across the 35-yard line. Well, we've got a little bit of the contact at the end of this play. So Aldrick Robinson has got Charles Tillman, 33, on him. I think he's, he's backpedaling. He sees Chris Conti back there. He's got the deep half of the field. I'm okay. But now, all of a sudden, as we're trying to track the ball, we get a little incidental contact. Conti goes down. And then Charles Tillman is out of position to make a play on the ball. And what very easily could have been an interception turns into a Redskin touchdown. There have been touchdowns scored on the last four drives. Tillman says, my fault. And now the Bears get the ball into the hands of Jeffrey. And Alshon Jeffrey picks up the first down. Out to the 46-yard line. Gain of 11 again in case you join us late. Jay Cutler went out in the second quarter with a groin injury when he was sacked by... Chris Baker, so it has been Josh McCown, the Bears' backup quarterback. Redskins led by seven at the half. Matt Forte with a pair of touchdowns in the second half for the Bears. Redskins over 400 yards of total offense. Bears had only 46 yards in the first half. From the 46, pump fake by McCown. Now he throws, and it is Jeffrey who makes the catch for a Chicago first down at the Redskins' 34-yard line. I tell you what, head coach Mark Tressman was not kidding when he said our whole playbook is still available to us with Josh McCown in the lineup. And the protection from the offensive line, really, we're talking about the playmakers that are helping out Josh McCown, but the offensive line giving him the time and the confidence to stand in that pocket and find Alshon Jeffrey down the field. Seven straight completions for McCown, who started two for six. From the 34, this is Forte. Matt Forte with three touchdowns today. He's the first Bear with three rushing touchdowns in a game since Rashawn Salam back in 1995. The team record is four. And that has not been done since 1973. Bobby Douglas at Green Bay. Now Forte split out wide to the left. Second down at six. Martellus Bennett 
shifts into the backfield. The count under pressure got rid of it before he was hit by Arapo. No flags. Brandon Marshall, the intended receiver, D'Angelo Hall, on the coverage. You talked about it earlier, Dow. Hall has been all over Brandon Marshall today, but the pressure up front, McCowan standing in that pocket. The offensive line did a pretty good job. He just got to get rid of the ball a little bit faster. Bears now facing a third down and seven, trailing by seven. McCown calls timeout with the play clock winding down. So a big third down play coming up for the Bears following this timeout. Yeah, and you know what? We're going to, if they come out in that same lineup, let's go check the slot because Brandon Marshall, when he goes inside into the slot, D'Angelo Hall will not follow him in. He's going to play outside when he's on the outside, right side or left side. He'll take Brandon Marshall on that snap right before the snap. It was actually Josh Wilson who was going to have Brandon Marshall coming out of the slot. Very different for a corner when he's covering in the slot compared to outside. D'Angelo Hall with the four interceptions of Jay Cutler in the Redskins' last game against the Bears. And some talk back and forth throughout the week. Cutler and Marshall and Hall. Marshall with five receptions today. It is now third down and seven. And Brandon Marshall is going to be in the slot. He's right here with nobody over top. D'Angelo Hall is outside with Earl Bennett. McCown hit as he throws. And the pass incomplete. It was the rookie David Emerson with the pressure on McCown. And now the Bears send out the field goal unit. Uh, the Redskin defense steps up on the last two snaps. Brian and Rackpo on the previous one. David Amerson coming there. Matt Forte has been really, really good here in the second half running the football. Got to be a little bit more stout in pass protection right there and help out your quarterback. So here is Cole, 49-yard attempt. He missed his last try from the left hash. Robbie Gold's kick from 49 yards out is good. Just inside the right upright. So the Chicago Bears pull to it in four. This game is sponsored by the Galaxy Note 10.1. The next big thing is here. Welcome back, Redskins, with a four-point lead following Robbie Gold field goal. Six-play, 34-yard drive for the Bears. Redskins led by seven. And Cutler was knocked out of the game, 17-10. Outside kick attempt by the Bears. Wow. And I think the Bears have recovered. That is the initial indication. There is a flag at the 37-yard line. Got an official down. Zach Bowman comes out with it. We do have a flag down at the 36-yard line. Reed Dougherty's down also. I tell you 50. what, real number one on the surprise onside kick, do not be offside. Joe DiCamillis, the special teams coach for the Chicago Bears, will have to see if they broke rule one on the surprise onside. Now remember, it's got to travel 10 yards unless it is hit by the receiving team. So there's our yellow line. The ruling on the field is that Chicago recovered the ball. However, offside, kicking team. Five yard penalty from the previous slot, and we'll re-kick. So rule number one was broken. Bears were offside. You huddle up on the side. When you're going to call this, you get everybody together. Hey, we're going surprise on side. Don't be off sides. It's the next thing that is said. So let's keep an eye on the 35-yard line.
Was wow. it Eric you Williams? Know, you know, know what? I, if it's Weems, I Weems not just, all the way just to the left of the kicker. I tell you what, that is uh, that is not an egregious offsides. The Washington Redskins got really lucky on that. I think that should be Chicago ball. I think they I think they executed it. So we'll check in with uh, Mike Pereira. Mike, what did you see? Well, I'll tell you, you know, if it's a normal kickoff, you, you give a lot of latitude on being offside, but an onside kick, officials have already, always, always been told it's a literal plane. So if any part of your body, any part of your body is across right when the ball is touched, then it is offside. So that's the difference between the two. And I think he just does break the plane, but they're very judicious on this, on onside kicks. All right, thanks, Mike. How about this now? Robbie Gold, 0 for 11 in his career. That would have been the first recovery of a Gold onside kick. This time he gets it deep, and Joshua Morgan takes it out to the 18. This November, some cops are born, others are made. Get ready for the next evolution of cop drama. Don't miss the show. Critics are calling Obsession Worthy. Almost Human premieres Monday, November 4th on Fox. Washington Redskins with a four-point lead. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Either team has led by more than seven points in this game. Bears had a 10-3 lead back in the second quarter. It's Washington by four. And a nice job by Stephen Pye returning after missing the last two games. Loss of one for Morris. We check in with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, Kenny, we go to Philadelphia, where Tony Romo finds Terrence Williams for the nine-yard TD grab, 17-3. Nick Foles coming into the game, or excuse me, leaving the game. Matt Barkley coming into the game for Philadelphia. All right, Joel, and now Blake Costanzo is down. He's the linebacker who replaced the injured Lance Briggs for the Bears. So they lost D.J. Williams. In last week's game, their starting middle linebacker, there's Briggs, who went out with the shoulder injury <laughs> earlier today. And now, Costanzo will head off. Looked like they might have just been working out some cramps. He's going to be on your big four on special teams. A lot of running for Blake Costanzo during the course of the day, and then all of a sudden, some extra reps as the fill-in for Lance Briggs. So Costanzo replaced by... Kasim Green, rookie out of Rutgers, number 59. Big East Defensive Player of the Year. The last two seasons, Green in for Costanzo. Second down and 10. It's Griffin. And Robert Griffin, the third stays inbounds this time. Well aware of the first down marker. There's a flag. Griffin started towards the sidelines and then cut back to his right to pick up the first down. Yeah, and he's a runner at this point. He doesn't have his protection as a quarterback, especially when he goes head first. There's the cutback inside, Kenny. There are fouls against both teams on the play. Holding, offense, number 36. Personal foul, late hit, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 59. Those penalties offset, replay, second down. There's Darrell Young, the fullback, called for the hold, and then it was Kasim Green, who was in for Costanzo, called for the late hit. And there's your hold on the outside against James Anderson. And then as Robert Griffin III comes back inside, the hit on Kasim, by, or the foul up by Kasim Green, Looked like Griffin was already down. Looked like he'd already committed to leave his feet. Now Costanzo's back in. So Costanzo replaces Green. Second down and 10. Following the offsetting penalties. It's Griffin again. Cuts to the inside. And is down at the 22, a gain of three yards. 
because that was a nice job just getting some positive yards out of that one because you had two bear defenders that read that perfectly. Not only is Lance Briggs out, but Charles Tillman has headed to the sidelines. A knee injury, his return is probable, so Isaiah Fry has come into the game for Tillman. Oh, two perennial pro bowlers for the Bears on defense are out. Third down and seven. Perkins' pass is incomplete, so the... Redskins will punt it away. Santana Moss, the 13-year vet, the intended receiver. And Charles Tillman goes down, so Zach Bowman kicks to the corner, and Isaiah Fry comes in, plays that nickelback in coverage out of the slot. Makes a nice play. So after scores on five straight possessions, four touchdowns and a field goal, Rocker punting to Hester. Took one all the way back earlier. Not this time. Down at the 33. Redskins by four. Redskins lead by four. A number of key injuries suffered by the Bears. They lost Jay Cutler in the second quarter with a groin injury. He is out. Lance Briggs has not yet returned. There's Lance and Charles Tillman during that last series. Remember, he missed the Bears' last game against the Giants with a knee injury. And for Chicago, Darrell, this is their only game in a 24-day stretch. They haven't played since a week ago Thursday. They have a bye coming up and then a Monday night game at Green Bay. They're going to need every single one of those days to get these guys healed up. So now counts McCown and the Bears have the ball back as McCown swings it out to Forte. But Ryan Kerrigan is right there to make the tackle with 6.15 remaining. Mark Trestman's Bears trailing by four. Loss of five on the play, setting up second down and 15. And yeah, we've been calling a lot of guys' names on defense. D'Angelo Hall, Brian Arakpo. I tell you what, that guy right there, Ryan Kerrigan, playing real consistent all season long. Hey, that's going to do a lot of things on that defense also. Count on second down. Fires and the catch is made by Brandon Marshall. Marshall to the Redskins, 43, a 29-yard pass play. Coming off the top, so that means man-to-man -man with D'Angelo Hall. Gets the separation out of the break. He's a big target coming into the middle of the field. Marshall, White Cutler, drafted by Mike Shanahan in Denver back in 2006. Six receptions today. From the Redskins, 44. McCown fires, and it's Jeffrey. Stays on his feet. Alshon Jeffrey with a stiff arm to D'Angelo Hall. And then he is finally tackled inside the 10. 35 yards from McCown to Jeffrey. Uh, Tony, here's an opportunity to teach the young guys out there. I tell you what, make the tackle, don't go for the big hit. Number one, we may be losing all Sean Jeffrey to the side right here, too. Here he is on the inside into the middle of the field. He doesn't wrap his no. arms around, he uses his shoulder, and he's too high. If he goes low right here, boom, next play. Marquise Wilson, top of your screen, in for Jeffrey, number 10. Three wide receivers set. First and goal from the Redskins, nine. A count to Earl Bennett. There is a flag as Bennett takes it in for a Bears touchdown. It's a false start against Chicago. That was the initial indication. Illegal formation. So the point to take it off the board, it will be first and goal from the Redskins, 14. On the outside right here, we got to be back. 
Your tight end, 83, Martellus Bennett, is on the line. Pearl Bennett has to be off the ball. Now Wilson split to the left. Got it wide to the right. From the 14-yard line, McCown steps up and throws. Broken up intended for Marshall, and he took a heavy hit. That was Brandon Merriweather again. He had the hit on Alshon Jeffrey early. Let's see if he's got another one here. It looked like he was high with contact again. And you saw Josh Wilson of the Redskins calling for the Bears medical staff. Now there has been a late flag thrown. There's the hit yeah. by Merriweather. Helmet, shoulder, forearm. You cannot go to the head. Now we've seen it now twice. It's a Defense number 31. High hit to the defenseless receiver. After distance to the goal line, automatic first down. Now Marshall still out on the field, so it looks like he will stay in the game. D'Angelo Hall is going crazy out here. Screaming at the officials. I'm surprised there's not another flag. Well, he's got nothing to complain about, yeah, Tony. That's I a mean, classic. It's a launch. It's it's to the head. I, I totally agree. That's a penalty. For those of you who have just joined us, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa in Landover, Maryland. Redskins lead the Bears by four, just over four minutes remaining. Brandon Marshall took a hard hit on the last play, headed off to the sidelines. First and goal from the seven, Josh McCown in for the injured Jay Cutler. McCown throws to the end zone, it's Martellus Bennett for the go-ahead Bears touchdown. He has been a tremendous addition to the Bears offense. The tight end position lacking production for several years in Chicago. And Martellus Bennett gives them a skill set that they have not had. Number 83 releases straight up the field, gets dropped in coverage. London Fletcher got caught sneaking a peek. The savvy vet. Little play fake by Josh McCown, enough to hold him. And Martellus Bennett gets up the field, uncovered for the touchdown catch. His first reception today, the former Cowboy and Giants. Robbie Gold with the extra point. Our seventh lead change today. It's the Bears by three. It's just a little play fake that's going to get London Fletcher to look inside, and that's all Martellus Bennett needed to get that separation. And for Josh McCown, his first touchdown pass since the 2011 season. Bears lost Jay Cutler back in the second quarter to a groin injury when he was sacked by the Redskins' Chris Baker. Matt Forte has three rushing touchdowns for Chicago. And now Martellus Bennett with his fourth touchdown of the season. Our seventh lead change, we have had five ties and this is now the second highest scoring game in the nfl this season trailing only denver 51 dallas 48 and we've had them all different ways we've had the return game defense with a pick six charles tillman devin hester with a punt return Very impressed by Chicago across the board, the entire team, how they've handled this injury situation, losing your starting quarterback right before the half. Look at Josh McCown getting his guys fired up on the sideline. And then to be without really your, your two integral leaders on the defense. And you start a quarterback. Bears have now scored on their last four possessions. They have not punted in the second half. So it's the Redskins who have led by seven four different times who now find themselves 
Down by three. It was Matt Forte with a 50-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. This tie the game at 24. And then Roy Halloo Jr. with his second touchdown today. Redskins back up by seven. Forte again into the end zone for the third time today. And then RG3 to Aldrick Robinson. 45-yard touchdown. That gave the Redskins a 38 41 lead, but the Bears have scored the last 10 points, and now a flag as Roy Hallou Jr. is tackled by Jonathan Boston. Holding. Holding. Defense. Defense. Number 92. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Stephen Pyatt. So the Bears, without Lance Briggs, without Charles Tillman on the field. Already missing Henry Melton and Nate Collins, their starting defensive tackles. And D.J. Williams, their starting middle linebacker. There's Briggs on the left, Tillman on the right. Without their helmets, they can only watch. From the 25-yard line on first down, the catch is made by Jordan Reed, the rookie tight end who has had a spectacular game. That's his eighth reception. And he has got over 100 yards for the day, a 26-yard pass play. Yeah, and he has been very, very difficult to cover coming off that tight end spot right into the middle of the field. Now the handoff is Roy Hulu Jr. who stumbled a bit, regains his footing, and takes it to the Bears' 43-yard line. Uh, tremendous trust with your offensive lineman right there because Stephen Paya and Julius Peppers had pushed the uh, offensive lineman into the backfield, trusting your lane, trusting that route in that zone run game to get to the edge. From the 43, it's Halu Jr. once again. At this time, he's brought down by Landon Cohen, who spent camp with the Dallas Cowboys and then signed by Chicago. Briggs urging his teammates on from the sideline. Now Major Wright has gone out as well. Now it's got their whole starting defense on the sideline. Greg Stiltz and a free safety for Major Wright. Third down and five. Griffin backpedaling under pressure from McClellan. And then he throws. And the catch is made sideline by Garcon for a Redskins first down as we approach the two-minute warning. So with RG3 under pressure, he's able to find Garcon. He took it down to the Bears' 37-yard line. Redskins on the move with two minutes to go, trailing by three. Two minutes remaining, fourth quarter with the Bears' Leading the Redskins, 41-38. There's Josh McCown sitting to the left of Brandon Marshall. McCown with the go-ahead touchdown pass. Lance Briggs, Charles Tillman, both out. Boy Halu Jr. in the backfield. Off the fake to Halu. Griffin backpedaling. Now he throws. Nearly intercepted by Zachary Bowman, Leonard Hankerson, the lieutenant receiver. Yeah, he's got to get his eyes on that a little bit quicker. That was almost a big mistake by Robert Griffin III. Our game summary, three key injuries suffered by the Bears. Cutler did not return, injured in the second quarter. Devin Hester ties Deion Sanders, 19th career return touchdown. Second highest scoring game in the NFL this season, trailing only the Broncos and the Cowboys. We have had seven lead changes five times. Second down and 10 from the Chicago 37. Griffin to the near side. It's Garcon. And he picks up some key yardage for the Redskins. They love to score a touchdown, but more importantly, have gotten into field goal range for Kai Forbath trailing by three. Line of scrimmage now the 28, so if the Redskins did not pick up any more yards, it would be a 46-yard attempt. 
Third down and one. Morris in the backfield. And Morris picks up a first down and more. He's tackled at the 19-yard line by Chris Conti. He has run hard all afternoon. Alfred Morris, Roy Hulu Jr., Robert Griffin the third. The, the Redskin running game is getting very, very close to what we remember it for late last season. Over 200 yards on the ground for the Redskins. Now 206. From the 19. Richards' pass is caught by Garçon. Bowman makes the tackle at the 13-yard line. And a timeout is taken by the Redskins with a minute three remaining. Well, late in the first half, on a sack by Chris Baker, Jake Cutler gets hurt. He is out from that point. You can see in a lot of pain trying to get in the locker room. So they turn it over to Matt Forte in the second half with rushing touchdowns. Roy Halou Jr. spelling Alfred Morris. It has been back and forth the entire second half. The last touchdown, Martellus Bennett to give the Chicago Bears the lead. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Redskins trail by three. Second down and four from the Bears' 14-yard line. The little in the backfield. Griffin looking. He throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Santana Moss, Zachary Bowman on the coverage. Good tackle by Zach Bowman. Puts his helmet right on the football. Coming in from the side. Actually, might have gone right through the chute on Santana Moss. Now third down and four. Three wide receivers, Halu, long back. Griffin on third down, he throws his Reed! Jordan Reed, down to the Bears, three-yard line, has a Redskins first down. I tell you what, he's just had a breakout game today, watching him on film, but even listening, number 86, watch this move. Real good patience, sticks Chris Conti on the outside, comes back inside. Ninth catch of the game for Reed for 134 yards. The rookie third-round pick out of Florida. Does a nice job of holding on to the ball, too. Look at Conti all over that thing trying to rip it out. Excellent ball security. Bears have used their second timeout. Redskins have two remaining. First and goal from the three. Not one drop, as Tony talked about. The great ball security there at the end of that run as Chris Connie's trying to rip it out. But then also, nine targets, nine catches. Huge afternoon for Jordan Reed. Below the backfield. First and goal from the three-yard line. High snap. Hand off to Halu. And he's in. Washington Redskins have struggled in the red zone this season. One of the big reasons they lost to Dallas last Sunday night, special teams and red zone. Today, they have rediscovered their run game down in the red zone. It has been impressive to watch Alfred Morris and Roy Hulu Jr. run the football once they get inside that 20-yard line. Redskins. It's just a good feel. You're going to see he's going to start to the right, but he's able to make the cutback all the way to the left side because he's patient as a runner. He doesn't overcommit. Santana Moss does a nice job coming in, sealing 
that running lane for Roy Hallou Jr. Good job by Robert Griffin the third handling that high snap as you pointed out, Kenny. I and mean, that was a quick handoff after a high snap. Eighth lead change of this game. Did they leave too much time? <laughs> Eleven plays, 80 yards. Third touchdown for Halu. A lot of long drives today, punctuated with touchdowns. Coming into the game today, they've, they've been effective at having long drives when you talk about 10 yard or 10 plays or more, but not able to punch it in for the touchdown, settling for field goals this afternoon. Everything firing on all cylinders for the Redskin offense. Halu ties a franchise record with three rushing touchdowns. Last to do it, Morris against the Cowboys last December as Anderson puts it back to Hester. That's dangerous, and now very dangerous. I'll allow the Music City miracle. Hester goes across the field to Anderson, who takes it out to the 39-yard line. I'll tell you what, that was a great throw by Devin Hester. That was all the, the way across the field. Oh, my Lord. He threw that going back on his feet, too. Wow. Look at that. That's all arm, all the way across the field. Just how Joe Dean Camillo's had it thrown up, right? Absolutely. He might be the third quarterback, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hunting for him all game. We finally found him. Well, the second quarterback, McCown, and the Bears need a touchdown. They have one timeout. McCown swings it out to Forte, and he's able to get out of bounds at the Redskins 49. Coming up after the game, it's the State Farm post-game show with Kurt and the gang from Los Angeles. Wild game here at FedEx Field. Mark Trestman lost his starting quarterback, Jay Cutler, to a groin injury in the second quarter. Lost key players on the defensive side. We have had five ties, eight lead changes. Redskins lead by four, 25 seconds remaining. Bears with one timeout. Arakpo with pressure. McCown gets rid of it. The Forte aiming for the sidelines. Redskins want to keep him in bounds. And they do. And now the Bears forced to use their final timeout. Great job by the Redskins defense as Forte attempted to get out of bounds. Yeah, David Amerson right there playing great leverage coming from the outside in, forcing Matt Forte backwards. Now, Bears fans are going to say he's going out of bounds. He was going out of bounds backwards. His for it was not forward progress to stop that clock. Official winding the clock, and then the Bears use their final timeout. So they have 15 seconds remaining. Line of scrimmage, the Redskins... 44, chance of defense from the crowd here in Landover, Maryland. Redskins have lost Reed Dowdy to a concussion. They're starting safety. McCown in trouble. Wrapped up first by Kerrigan. And then by Barry Caulfield. The final exclamation point for the Washington Redskins. In their 45-41 victory over the Chicago Bears. Who lost quarterback Jake Cutler in the second quarter. Second highest scoring game in the NFL this season. Back in a moment.